So, um, welcome, welcome to the Johannesburg Business School. Uh, my name is Lyle White. I head up the Johannesburg Business School. Uh, it's a new business school. It started just two years ago and it's taken us this time to get the MBA ready just for people like yourselves. So welcome, welcome to the, one of the newest business schools uh, in South Africa, the newest business school in Johannesburg, and obviously to the University of Johannesburg. What is very interesting, uh, Johannesburg, or the University of Johannesburg is, as you know, one of the largest universities in Africa, uh, a top five ranked university in South Africa, and the Johannesburg Business School is last of those big universities that, is actually, that has created uh, a business school. So that's going to be a very, very exciting moment for us, and we'll talk a little bit more about the University of Johannesburg if you are interested in that. Um, what I thought I'd start off with, um, before we get into the nitty gritty, because you all here to hear about the MBA, right? You all here to hear about the MBA, right? You're, not, you're in the wrong room, okay? This is the place. This is the place where we're going to hear about it. So, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, and what is interesting to me, and, and I'll be honest with you, just about an hour ago, I was thinking, yeah, you know, there's this group of bright young minds that are going to be coming here and wondering, okay, well, Let's, let's embark on this journey and, and let's see. And what, what interests me is the history of the MBA and the background to the MBA. How many of you know anything about the background to the MBA? Anybody? First correct answer actually gets free entry into the MBA. So, <laughs> so the MBA is over 100 years old. Over 100 years old, it, was, it came about, and maybe Conrad is going to dispute this because there is a, it's contested among all of us that run business schools. It, the first MBA actually came about um, at Harvard. The first business school was Wharton, so there's a little bit of a distinction between those. But over a hundred years ago was the first MBA in the United States. It was designed very much to, to, uh, to add or to provide some type of support, but to have an impact on, on business. And as this has evolved and morphed over time, over the last hundred years, the big question that I had in my mind was, what's its contribution to the world today? What's its contribution to our context here in South Africa, in Africa at large. And I think that is where it becomes very, very interesting. The MBA, and if you've been reading a lot about the MBA, and I, I might be speaking to those that contest this, or maybe those that are already converted, in the sense that you're looking for a new type of MBA or a new approach to this. But the MBA, as we know it in the world today, and in places like South Africa, and other places like India, Brazil, uh, in China even, is in desperate need of a, of a refresh, a reinvention, if you like. The MBA still speaks to the old school style of the MBA traditionally, and you see this around South Africa. MBA programs are designed very much in the same mold that they were over a hundred years ago in, at Harvard. But the context that we're living in today, the terms of trade, the terms of business have changed dramatically over that period of time. And there's a need for us to actually change and, and evolve with, that, uh, with, with those changes over time. So that's the first little thing that I was thinking about before I came here, because I wanted to share with you perhaps what we're thinking in the Johannesburg Business School, but what we're thinking about the MBA as our flagship program and, and how we want to do things a little bit differently and how we want to have an impact that is a little bit different to the other MBAs that are offered around South Africa. Um, and this difference and refreshing the MBA forms part of or it informs our purpose here at the Johannesburg Business School. So that's something that I, uh, that I can talk to you at length about. I don't think they've left us with copious bottles of wine outside, so I can't really go into it in any great detail, but I'm sure we can actually get into that at some stage, because it is something that, uh, that, that tickles my interest and that I like to, to debate with, with people around the purpose uh, of a business school and, and, and the purpose of the MBA. I'm going to share with you, and I've listed, you can see these are my, my crib notes over here, I've listed a whole range of areas that, that uh, or, or areas of differentiation. What makes us, or how are we different from other programs that are run by other business schools, how are we different from other MBAs, um, and let's keep it to those other MBAs in South Africa. Our focus here at the Johannesburg Business School is, first and foremost, we teach business. We teach real business, and it's, uh, it, it steers away from the practice of general management or the programs around general management. We teach real business for the growth and scaling of small and medium-sized businesses. Our focus here is very much around small and medium-sized businesses. So if you have a small or medium-sized business, if you are interested in entering that space, if you are currently working in that space, or supporting them, or interested in, in how we actually incorporate small and medium-sized businesses into our value chains, this is the right place for you. This is the right MBA for you. So that's the first real uh, key area. Another thing which you'll read in these wonderful little brochures that we put together for you this evening is, uh, the MBA is orientated around three concentric circles. And you'll see them, the, the center circle is around self, 
Then there's a, another circle that's enterprise. You can look at it while I'm, I'm chatting you through it or talking you through it right now. And then there's obviously context, which is the environment. I want to talk a little bit about the self part. Uh, our focus is very much on personal interaction. This is going to be a, a, an MBA that is really focused on the personal interaction, on self. Obviously, when you talk about self, uh, that might uh, spill over into well-being, etc. But also around conscious leadership, presence, and all the other things. The, 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 the stuff that is coming out at the forefront of, uh, of leadership <coughs> development in the world today. We're going to have that here. But also very much around mentorship. Um, I think in, in South Africa at the, at the moment, we are lacking in mentorship and that development of, of our young business leaders. And um, we're going to have a very, very strong mentoring program that's going to have uh, people that have been there and done it. Experts and things like that that have actually been there and done that will, that will, be, that will have that personal touch on, on the MBA and throughout the program. Around this, or that, that kind of that, that slots into the program is an emphasis on practical uh, engagements, practical knowledge and skills development. Again, I, you'll, you'll hear a lot about practical uh, practical engagements and practical discussions, the use of practitioners, experts, sure, expert faculty, but people that have actually been there and run their businesses that will be lecturing and that will be focused around, uh, around some of the, the modules and, and the electives that we're going to be running throughout. Um, one of the things, and we're sitting here really at the heart of Johannesburg right now, uh, and this is also going around the methodology of teaching. Sure, the, the Socratic approach to teaching, which we hear about at, uh, at the various uh, business schools, that will be practiced, but uh, the, the mode and the methodology around the teaching is going to be very, very different. What's more is, and I want us to look out the window right now, this, this is why we've chosen a glass building, you can look out <coughs> um, and you can see the, literally the playground that we're going to be operating in. This outside here, throughout the whole of Johannesburg and other parts of the country and even the world, and I'll talk a little bit about the world, is where we're going to be running our programs and our classes. It's not going to be purely classroom based and that's something we want you to get a, a practical exposure and, and, and that type of um, experience from real businesses. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to check if I've missed out anything in, the, in, in those. But I think the final one is, we are really geared, and this, is, this comes back to the University of Johannesburg, we are geared towards the future world of learning and the future world of work. The key strategic focus of the University of Johannesburg is around the fourth industrial revolution. And this is the business school that will help you equip your business, help you build, help you grow and scale your businesses for the fourth industrial revolution. Everything, that golden thread that runs through it is around uh, around uh, technology, around innovation. But very, very importantly, and I want to leave you with this because this speaks to our purpose again. It's to equip your business, to equip yourselves for the fourth, for the fourth industrial re revolution, but with a real impact, not only for your business, but for society. That underpinning feature of, of collective impact is something that will permeate throughout the MBA. So if you are interested in making a, or having an impact on society, and believe me, that's what speaks to sustainable business. This is really the place that you want to do uh, your MBA at. So those are just some of the areas. I think what I wanted to do, Conrad, before I hand over, because and Conrad's going to go into more of the details, I wanted to uh, I wanted to make reference to two areas of the MBA. Two, let's call them projects and maybe a program that can that really speaks to our approach. The first one is what we call the capstone project. This is the project, you know, at the end of the, your MBA. Many of the other business schools say, oh, your, your research project or your thesis. We've steered away from this, this academic, onerous uh, research project that is very, very academic. And this is a more practically orientated project, uh, a, a kind of a practical, yeah, it's a practically orientated project that brings the entire MBA together. All the electives, all the modules that you've done. And uh, one of the modules, by the way, is, is one that we refer to as contemporary management. And what I mean by that, uh, contemporary is the issues of the day and how that is relevant to your business and how you actually solve some of those dilemmas. Real uh, practical uh, simulations that we will run to help you work through those. And that contemporary management module speaks to your uh, capstone project. So it, it kind of weaves it together and through this also we provide mentorship in, in delivering that big project. And I think that's a very, very big and important differentiator about this, uh, this MBA at JVS. The second one is uh, a, a, a program, one of the electives that we run called the International Elective. This is an um, elective where you travel abroad. There, there's, there, there will be a choice of three destinations around the world. Uh, two emerging market countries, countries that have got a similar context to ours perhaps. 
and they've all got a different thematic area. So I'll, as an example, and I'm, I'll just use this one example, uh, we are in discussions with uh, an Argentinian uh, business school and university that has a small, a small business or small and medium sized business program and at the final stage of their program in, uh, in the spirit of scaling up their businesses they are now running through a, a simulation and working with real businesses at the same time to internationalize those small and medium sized businesses. So the final stage of their program is really to, uh, to expose small businesses and to equip them for international markets. And, and that, so we're teaming up with those, uh, those schools, those students. And when I say students, it's not students just from Argentina. This particular business school attracts students from Germany. Uh, this year, in fact, I've, looked at, I've just looked at the list before I came down. Germany, Armenia, Brazil, Italy, and the United States. And you literally work in syndicate groups with these guys uh, and, uh, and you develop strategies for those markets. It's kind of a final stage of, of scaling up your small and medium-sized businesses. So that's just one example of of the international elective and it really does um, having really participated in many of these types of international modules this one is very very different from anything else I've ever seen in the South African context so that's really my part I think I just want to leave you with a uh, and this is not a sentimental gesture by any means this here uh, this is a big moment because it's a it's it's a it's a it's a huge commitment but it's a commitment that we are embarking on together with you this is uh, your success speaks to our success. As we launch this MBA, our alumni are going to speak to our reputation, it's going to speak to our success. So we are interested in making sure that you are successful as well. And that's something that I, I want, I really want to kind of hammer home is that, that we are in this journey and we're embarking on this journey together. And we want to make this MBA a success, not only among the JBS, uh, the people that are here at the JBS, among the faculty and the staff, but also among the people that are doing the MBA and ultimately that are, are the alumni. So I really look forward to, well, I look forward to engaging with you guys further this evening. And what I do look forward to is inviting you to join, join us on this journey of uh, the JBS MBA going forward in 2020. Thank you very much. And I'm going to, yeah, you can do that. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to Conrad Vigi, who's going to run through some of the the, the finer details and the particulars of, uh, of the MBA. Conrad, thank you. Thanks very much for that. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. We're going to be talking about the MBA, and maybe the starting off point for each one of you is why would you want to do an MBA? Because that's really what it's about. You've come here this evening to explore the MBA, but what is the question in your mind? What will the MBA do for you? What problem will it solve for you? And why would you want to do it? Let's take one or two ideas. We'd like to venture something. Okay, the prize is small pieces of bolt on outside. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that. Yeah? Do an MBA? And uh, what is it all about? Yes, let's go ahead. I think for, for me, Conrad, it would be to build a greater confidence mm -hmm. in the business market. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is models to work with and all of that. So one would be better prepared to deal with the current market situations and with a greater confidence in approaching that. And exactly that. What MBAs do for people very well is to build their confidence. They work together for 21 months and they leave there much more confident about what they have to do and how they can do it. There's a great business book that was written along these lines. It started with this phrase. It said management was talking about management. Management is about knowing what to do and then doing it. And what we will be helping you to do is to know what to do and then working with you on the doing it, which is very unusual. As Lyle has said, we're going to have all sorts of mechanisms in place to make sure that what you learn has impact back at work. Because that will make a bigger impression in the marketplace than merely having a piece of paper. When you can say I did this, I did that, I did the next thing. Any other ideas about the MBA? What do? Yes, what do we so do? So mine would be a little bit opposite to what you said, but uh, uh, almost the same light. Mm. So I've gained quite a lot of experience mm. over the years, mm. but there's lots of puzzle pieces missing, mm. you know? So I think the MBA will help fill that. Mm. And I think in order for me to move to the next level, mm. I would need that piece of paper. Good, with the puzzle pieces. But think about this. I have said that for the majority of all of us, we have not studied in the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. We actually do not know what it really entails. Any idea about how many jobs they expect 
and the United States will lose between now and 2030. So they'll lose certain jobs, but obviously other jobs will come in. But jobs will be lost. Any ideas about that? How many million jobs do they think will be lost in 10 years' time? Nine million. How many million? One million. Nine. Nine million. Good guess. A bit low, but good guess. <laughs> Uh, we try to be encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> the point is that, as I say, jobs will be lost, but opportunities will be created. But the problem is, the people that lose their jobs may not be able to get the new jobs that are created. Yeah. And that's why you want to do an MBA. The figure they give is, nine, is 73 million jobs yeah. will be lost. Think about this. You think about something like trucking. If they bring in self-driving trucks, <coughs> oops, all those jobs are gone. Think about the insurance. The trucks don't crash into each other as a result of driving this. So all sorts of things start to change. So you need to study in the fourth industrial revolution to prepare yourself. Uh, Thomas Davenport wrote a great book. The book was called Thinking for a Living. Thinking for a Living. And his point that he was making, which is quite correct, he says your best performance is going to be human performance that is augmented. Augmented by technology and other things. We all ignore, uh, augment our performance now with our cell phones. Think about that. We use them all the time to augment our performance. So the MBA is the surest means in business for you to move ahead in actual fact. If you're looking for a sure means, not the only way, but one of the surest ways of moving ahead is to actually study some business subject like an MBA. I'll talk more, more about the JBS MBA later on. But think about this, you actually remake yourself through education. You literally remake yourself through education. So here we're sitting, 18th of July, Nelson Mandela Day, and this could be the day that you change your life. Because if you do an MBA, your life will be very different to your life without an MBA. That's reality. And you have to then make the decision, where do I do my MBA? And we're hoping that you choose JBS because of the reasons that we've already discussed and Lyle's talked about. So the MBA, as I say, is still the surest means in business for people to get ahead. Uh, if, and in terms of MBAs, we've heard the criticisms of them, but as Lyle says, a lot of the criticisms relate to the fact that they're still being taught in the old way instead of the new way. So, exactly that, why do an MBA? And then, taking a bit further, look at the JBS MBA. We're hitting very heavily on relevant practical knowledge. In other words, we want people to use the knowledge, and we want them to demonstrate that they have actually used the knowledge. Each block, so you're going to have blocks, four blocks a year. At the end of each block, we'll have a prize for the student who can come to us and say, I used this, and that was the outcome that I got, and we look at the best one in that way. So we're going to be encouraging students the whole time to take the knowledge and apply it. You've all heard about theory and practice. Well, this is we very heavy on the practice. We are going to call our lectures workshops rather than lectures because we'll do it this way around, which is very different to the traditional model. You'll have the lectures of three hours each. You'll have one and a half hours of input. You'll then have one hour in the classroom setting, break away to small groups, and in that you'll be building the bridge back to the workplace. You'll have a discussion about how we use this knowledge back at work. Then the last half hour is now you've thought about it, you've spoken about how we need to apply it, you come back and you have feedback and the lecturer says, yes, not this, but that, whatever it may be, and closes the loop. But you can see the focus is on saying, how do you use the knowledge? Because ultimately, if you're going to be successful, it's because of what you do, not merely because of what you know. So we're really pushing very hard on that. So the workshop approach is very different. And the application new knowledge, we're really going to work very hard on that. Then we have mentors. And we've, as Lyle was talking about the mentors, we have actually built in an hour of mentoring per program, per course, in the course itself. So therefore, they will help you take the knowledge once again and say, right, this is how you use it, talking about your experience in your organization, not generally, but very specifically about you. And then we thought long and hard. We said, well, if we look at what MBA students do, what will help them the most when it comes to getting value out of the MBA? And we said there are three things. By the way, this came out of focus groups that we were running. We were running focus groups 
with people that are interested in the MBA, people who are working in the SME space, and they came up with a number of things, and we crystallized it down to dashboards of measures, so that you'll have measures for each subject that you'd put in place, that you could use your dashboard to see how things are going, very important stuff. We're going to have toolkits which allow you to make the transition. So let's say you want to do a digital marketing campaign. There'd be a toolkit about how you should go about doing that. You don't have to think through all the steps yourself. The toolkit will guide you. You'll have discussed this in class, and you'd have an idea how to do that. Think about that. So if you take a simple example um, from HR, people management, how do you go about recruiting good people nowadays? Because you're not going to advertise in the Sunday Times, I hope, right? So there'd be a toolkit of how you go about doing a LinkedIn campaign to start securing people. Because very often we have the complaint, particularly at master's level, is they told me all the wonderful theory, but what I needed to do was the following. And I didn't know how to do it. I knew all the theory. So we're going to work very hard on that. And then each lecturer will be challenged to say, in your subject, where does technology fit in? No matter what that subject may be, speak to the technology that exists. Open people's eyes to the technology that you have available to you. By the way, nowadays they say this, if you can't do it on your cell phone, you more than likely won't. So therefore we'll be challenging our lecturers to say, by all means talk about technology in the grand sense, but speak about what people are carrying in their pockets and how that can be used to facilitate business. It's a very exciting world that we're in. Part of the fourth industrial revolution is the fact that the opportunities are opening up all over the show. And those opportunities are only available to you if you know about the technology that can facilitate it. You've all heard about big data, but what does that actually mean? And how do you use big data and how do you analyze big data to really have an impact in your business? So we're working very hard trying to force ourselves to address the fourth industrial revolution. Not just say it, but force ourselves to do that. And then the element of self-enterprise environment that Lyle was speaking about. On the MBA, the first thing that you'll start off with is conscious leadership. And conscious leadership speaks about the fact that people have to garner, or the word that was used is to kindle your energy. Think about that. Very often, we run out of energy, not time. And how do we actually build our energy to be able to perform very successfully? So this will be about how do you get the energy to be able to do what you want to do and become more vibrant and be able to achieve much more. I'm going to just ask a question very quickly. Has anyone heard of the concept of time management? You, you heard of it at other business schools, right? Not here? Good. Please. <laughs> because, in actual fact, there's no such thing as time management. There's no such thing as time management. The reason for that is we cannot manage time. We can only manage ourselves while time elapses. So conscious leadership would be saying, well, this is what you're working with. This is the raw material that you have. You're working with yourself. And we want to help you as much as we can to unleash that energy and that potential to be able to do great things. And we're engineering the course very much around it. Hence the mentors, hence the conscious leadership to start with. Hence, at the end of your core courses, we go back to leadership with the same person who would have, would have taken you through conscious leadership to close the loop. And you wouldn't be working in the middle. So this is really like having a full-on developmental program irrespective of an MBA. Very different, very different, and very, very worthwhile. So that's the self, the self part of it, improving oneself. The enterprise is all the things that you need to know to run a business in the fourth industrial revolution. And then environment is to ask yourself the question, what is the role of business in society? And some of you may have heard Lyle discussing exactly that on the radio. What is the role of business in society? What should business be doing? And we'd be pushing towards a model that says, do good while making money, right? which can be done. That's really what one would be looking at. OK. So we're going to be looking at things like business in the context of Africa and South Africa, very important. You're going to be looking at how to win in the marketplace. Think about that. If you're running a small or medium-sized business, it surely must be about winning in the marketplace because you want to succeed in business. 
the other very important part, and we hear this in the discussions with people, is how do you get people on your side and willing to perform in your business, small business? Think about that. Because we make mistakes with very good people, then we lose them. Then we wonder why we can't grow the business, because we've lost the actual raw material that is going to help us grow that business. New business models for the fourth industrial <coughs> revolution. We all know about Uber, we know, all know about Airbnb, we all know about Bolt and all these other things. But what sort of business model should we be looking at that fit in with the fourth industrial revolution? So we'll take you through those as well. Accounting for decision making and control, no, must have that. We're going to look at things like cost cutting, surely in a business. If I can cut costs out of my business, it's going to make it more successful. We'll look at that directly. We'll be looking at the local economy and its effects on business. We'll also be looking at an international or global mindset about how do you take business further, so we'll have that. And then the benefits of having an ethical business. If I look around this room, ninety-three percent of you have shopped at Woolworths. <laughs> I won't ask the one person who hasn't to put up their hand, okay? But you've all shopped at Woolworths, is that true? Okay. The fact is this, that if you think about Woolworths, one of the reasons that we go to Woolworths is we trust them, is that true? Do they charge us a premium for that? Yes, indeed they do, part of their business model. But ethical business, they would say we're doing good while making money because we sell good products and that sort of thing. And then as Lyle has spoken about it, your international trip where you'll actually go and work in other countries and see how SMEs, SMEs work there. There can be nothing finer than learning on an international trip, quite honestly. So there's just a few cities. Uh, is this the one we're giving away the free MBA or not? If you can identify all three cities. Okay. Right. okay. I'll leave you to think about that. Now, now we talk about what makes, <laughs> what makes the MBA JBS so different. First of all, we're saying, as Lyle said earlier, it's about business, not management. It's not about just managing people and this sort of thing. This is about business and knowing how to make business work for you. And we're very focused on that, and all the courses will be designed to do exactly that. Making an impact in a business, that's what it's about. Right? Dare I say it, it's going to be like a private business school in that you're going to have very small classes when I say small, we're more than likely looking at about 30 people in the class versus your 60 or 70 that you might get elsewhere. Therefore, each person will be known to the lecturers, the facilitators, and, dare I say it, the administration of the MBA. So you're going to get special attention in that way. And the reason is quite clear. As Lyle said earlier, our success depends on you being successful. Because we haven't got a background, we can't turn around and say, well, this is what we did in the past. The people that join us for the first MBA have to build a reputation with us. That's really what it is. And that's what we're looking for. How do you make knowledge work for you? Very important stuff. It's about critical thinking. Can we think through issues? We can't give you all the answers, but we can give you approaches to doing things. And that would include critical thinking. The capstone project. Lyle mentioned it and spoke about it. It's not a research project. It's called Independent Study. It is at NQF Level 9. It does have a literature review component built in because it's at NQF Level 9. But first of all, it solves a dilemma in an organization. Next thing it asks you is this. What are the key insights that you gain from the core courses? Next thing it asks you is this. Is tell us about your leader's manifesto. You've been through the whole course. Now tell us what you're going to be to be a great leader. And that would be a three-minute video, just speaking about you as a leader. And you'd be working towards it from the beginning. Because you should be able to articulate your view on leadership after working on the MBA for 21 months. Okay. Okay. And above all else, knowledge is exciting. And we're going to make it exciting for you. We're going to make it really exciting for you. And you'll end up with a curriculum vita that speaks about your achievements in your organization, not just the MBA because you'll be able to say, this is what it is. I got the prize in block three for the greatest impact, or whatever it may be. And that will speak very loudly in terms of employ employability elsewhere. So these are the facts that you're waiting for. We've also designed our admissions tests, our admissions uh, process, so that it is easier. It relies less on psychometric testing. 
it basically is going to have one or two tests that are linked to predictive measures on the MBA. So therefore, it'll be a straightforward and simple one. You're welcome to use the GMAT or the NMAT if you want to. We accept those. Um, we'll be opening registrations on the 1st of August. We'll close on the 31st of October. The tuition fee is an all-inclusive fee. So it's around about 260,000. There are a few little things that are added in, so it might be 500 rand over that. But that's the fee as it is. It includes a textbook, catering, and the international study tour. Notice that that we're not saying to you set aside four and a half thousand dollars for your international study tour. We're carrying the foreign exchange risk. We say to you that's your fee. We'll carry the risk, and that includes everything. So you pay 260 over two years. That will include the international study tour, which is a great advantage. We start on the 22nd of January, and as I said, 21 months. It's actually a 24-month program, but diligent students will finish it in 21 months. Okay? That's what it is. And then we run two sessions. We run an early bird, which will start at half past six, and we'll do that two mornings a week, so that you can come to the course, still fresh. We'll give you breakfast, right? Very light breakfast, so you don't fall asleep. Light <laughs> breakfast. And then... That's 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the morning, yes. It's, it's, it's early bed. <laughs> okay. uh, you'll leave at 9.30. So you avoid the traffic in both directions. Very important stuff, so you're not wasting your time. And many people like getting up early, but you're still fresh. And you don't have to worry about being held back at the end of the day, and then you miss your lecture and all the rest of it. So we think it's a wonderful option. You have your breakfast at the same time, so you don't need to worry about that. So instead of going to gym those two mornings, be Tuesdays and Thursdays, you come and do the MBA. And then you move on. Or doing it on a Saturday where you do both lectures on the Saturday, which is also a very good option. You don't have any traffic or anything else like that. Bear in mind, we're building into the lectures time for you to work together with your syndicates and time for you to clarify your individual projects. So we want to be with you all the way on the journey and to help you at those crunch points that people find difficult. We want to do that for you. So that is it in terms of entrance requirements. The entrance requirements, as you know, are standard for all MBAs because it's an NQF level 9 degree. You have to have an NQF level 8 qualification, which would either be an honours or a postgraduate diploma or a four-year engineering degree. But it must be at NQF level 8, four-year, or, as I say, three-year and one-year added. We're looking for four years' work experience in terms of that. We're looking for acceptable performance on the admissions tests. We're looking for a compelling motivation of why you would like to do it with JBS, do your MBA with JBS. Because you're relying on us to put together a class that you're going to network with and gain knowledge from. So we want to look at that quite closely. And there is a route for recognition of prior learning. So people who've got great track records can apply under recognition of prior learning. So I'm going to leave it there actual fact and just thank you very much for coming here we're delighted to have you here and we really hope that today you say yep i like what they say i want to make a difference and i can see how this will actually help me thank you very much you take a few questions as we go and then we, we're going to stick around as well afterwards to for those of you that want to disengage uh, directly or bilaterally with us but if uh, we can take a few questions, and you know, if I can't answer it, if Conrad can't be, but uh, Professor Steve <coughs> here in the in the audience is uh, working with us on this. So, um, are there any questions out there? <laughs> and, uh, you know what? When you ask a question, give us your name. Give us your name, and uh, no, just give us your name. <laughs> <laughs> right, my name is Saban Masebo. Uh, the first question I want to ask is that I, I have a feeling that. Uh, JBS with the MBA is going to you know, attract uh, a lot of audience and people are interested in studying the program. And the question with the number that Conrad um, mentioned is going to be the intake. My question is what, is, what is the caliber of students that will make your list? What will be the distinguishing factor that goes into the list? Because, I mean, we're here because we're interested in the so, so what you're asking the, the, the level of the students that are going to be coming yes, in. So what what would be the distinguishing factor that you choose from your applications that you're getting? Right, so, yeah, so first of all, there's a few practical requirements. 
we looked for 60% in the highest qualification. That was the cutoff in terms of going in there. Then we looked at the test, we're going to do a test of academic writing skills and also looking at numeracy just to make sure we can deal with the abundance of copying, things like that. Then the motivation as to why we think this is the right thing to be you. That's the good thing. And then, of course, what we would do is we would turn around and say, let's have a look at everyone's applied, we take the top of the but we're really saying, we want people to say, I know why I want to do this MBA and do it that well. By the way, we do have scholarships. So we have five scholarships that we will be offering. And if you want to apply for the scholarship, then you can apply for the scholarship as well. And the scholarship will be based on the fact of financial need. In other words, you can't do the MBA part of it. That you're a South African citizen, right? South African citizen, previously disadvantaged citizen. And also the fact that you are in a position where you can actually use the MBA in terms of scholarships. And scholarship is a full scholarship, it's 260, in other words, pay for the trip, pay for everything. And we allow you to do that. More questions? Yes. Give us your name. Tell us your name. Don't be shy. Katu. Can I use the results that I have for, for this year? Mm -hmm. I wrote the same test like general. Which are the GMAT or the. GMAT. Yeah? GMAT, yes, certainly. If you've got the GMAT, you're welcome to submit the GMAT. We would ask you to come and do the academic writing because it's not part of the GMAT. Okay. But it means that we're not very happy to accept GMAT or NMAT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 My name is Nick Tutuma. Okay, then. And just to end on his question. Because I think this is the first time that you guys are doing it. If you get more than 30 people that are interested and they, for some reason, meet the caliber that you want, I want to extend the number of increase the numbers. So just to be clear, we we are. I mean, the, the classes will be about 30 per cohort. So there's two cohorts. So uh, so the numbers should be around um, 50 or 60 students. We are looking to try and. Uh, to try cap it because we are really focused on that personal uh, mm -hmm. that, that personal interaction with the students. So that is that is something that we're going to be looking at very very closely. Okay, and then the, regarding the, the tuition, if someone is going to be funding themselves privately, because yeah. um, if I'm to do my calculations, at two sixty per month, that's almost like ten thousand. Like, well, what's the criteria? How do you guys balance? Were you just showing us your mathematical skills? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how you do that, eh? I had to. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, are you, yeah. Sorry, are you asking if there's financial, uh, if there's financial payment schemes or something like that? Yeah, because okay. just for someone who is financing themselves, so yeah. just to know to what extent, what are the things that you guys have been looking at, because paying off one sort it's uh, something else. Because I'm I'm I'm, we have been discussing this in some, in some detail, so I, I, I can't remember what the most up to date is. Right. So, yes, so what happens is that it's run by UJ as opposed to physical. In other words, UJ Finance run it, and we were told that there are schemes that can come in for what you can do. So, certainly, as you know, the fees will be broken down more or less half in the first year, slightly more in the second year because the international trip is in the second year, but more or less half. So, about, let's say, 120,000 first year, 140,000 this year, something it's because of the international event of this market. So, and it is interesting. I think one of the things that we did talk about was, I think that it's, you know, it's obviously useful if you can make the payments uh, up front and, and those. But I mean, we will, we, we can provide more more details on on those payment schemes because there are those available through UJ as well. Yes. Okay. Now, my name is Anis Mohamed. Sorry, what's your name? Anis Okay. You talk about the capstone project, is there any other assessments that will be, or any tests that will happen during the... Are well, you worried about those, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, from a personal perspective, I'm very, very anti any type of assessment, but this is an FQF level 9 uh, degree, so it's, there, will be, there will be assessments for, for each of the modules, and the, the nature of the assessment will depend on the module and the elective that, that, that you take. So, um, do you want to elaborate on that, Conrad? Yes, so typically you have two subjects per block. Bearing in mind we have contemporary management that runs throughout the year. So what you'd be doing is writing two exams at the end of the block. 
the exams typically count for 50% of the total mark. You then have an individual assignment and or a syndicate assignment 25 each. And that is, for a syndicate assignment, everyone gets a mark, individual assignment is on the term as well, and you add the three together and you get your final mark. But I'm afraid there's a lot of assessments all the way through. Bear in mind, just to go back to it, we're going to have to work with you so that there's total clarity in what you need to do. And you still have to go off and do it, but we're going to spend time making sure that you should be able to do it. And basically, if it works well for you, you can get your mentor to get your to do your set. No, I'm just kidding. You can't, you can't do that. That's not what the mentors. Audrey first, and then we're going to go to my friend over here. Audrey. Okay, so I don't have to say my name. I can because I've actually got a brilliant eyesight, and I can read it right there. Okay. Yeah. So why an MBA and not an MBL? And uh, if we participate in the MBA, um, is there something further after that? So would you have a PhD program after that? Okay, so I can comment a little bit on the MBL is the Master of Business Leadership that's offered at one or two institutions around South Africa. Yeah, and I look, I've got a, uh, I, I'll just say that the MBA is a little bit like the difference between a DBA and a, and a PhD. I'd rather do a PhD than a DBA, so you can maybe gauge my response on that one. So, um, but I don't know if you want to elaborate on the MBL versus the MBA, Conrad. Okay. Okay, don't, you don't have to elaborate on that. I'll just say that the MBA is the, the more globally recognized uh, a degree. That's a very simple and, and, and straight to answer. Uh, going forward as further studies, the MBA often lines you up, but not always, for to do a PhD. We at the moment, uh, through UJ, through obviously, uh, through the various uh, faculties here, offer various uh, PhD programs. So you can, you can look at that as well. So forward. you are reading. Yeah. Well, the, the Johannesburg Business, Business School focuses obviously on the MBA, um, and then going forward there's going to be other academic programs, but this MBA will line you up, or will position you for a, for a PhD through the university, because obviously the degree is issued by the University of Johannesburg ultimately, so I hope that answers your question. You're so, yeah, the other yeah. thing is that the MBA is an, an NQF level 9, PhD is an NQF level 10, so having passed the NQF level 9 will, will set you up to be able to do a PhD program at uh, through the auspices of UJ or any other university. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we can talk about this on a more personal level because you would, if you've got an idea of it ultimately doing a PhD, you would want to uh, make sure that you follow that track of the, the PhD because the PhD becomes a very specialized area. Okay. Because it's actually a very, very interesting <coughs> question around that. Around a lot of the MBAs when they enter aren't interested in doing a PhD and then through the process they, they're quite interested in, in embarking on that. Going forward. Senor, what's your support? You know, innocent. Yeah, innocent. Yeah. I know to accredit the qualification takes a lot of process, and this one accredited. Yes, this is the this, this is DHET accredited here in South Africa. Okay. Okay, okay. my name is Tapelo. Tapelo, I look at your browser. It talks mostly of the, uh, uh, the MBA program by JBS is focused mainly, mainly on SMEs. So just wanted to understand is it uh, excluding um, 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 people who have got like who are maybe one of some organization and are incorporate uh, through the development programs and would want to have an, a qualification of an MBA for them to progress or is it only basically for the people that are entrepreneurs or SMEs and so forth? Okay, it's a very good question. So the MBA at JBS has got a focus on small and medium sized businesses. It's a, it's a focus on growing and, and scaling your business. If you've got an interest, either if you are in, in those businesses, if you've got an interest in developing yourself into a person that's going to be running and driving a business, if you've got an entrepreneurial flair, but also uh, 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 there's many of you that might be in family run businesses. That and then those corporates or those people that are working in corporates looking for a way to actually develop your businesses or at the moment you're working with other small and medium sized businesses, this is the MBA for you. This is not necessarily an MBA that's going to help you climb the corporate ladder. That's my simple answer. Um, what I will say is that it will equip you to understand and, 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 and develop business. That's what, uh, that's what uh, the emphasis is on, on this MBA program. Do you guys want to add anything? I think they're exactly that. It's, we also have to be careful who we put into class. We want people to learn from one another in that way. But it's unlikely to be filled with entrepreneurs because that's not the target market. It's mainly medium sized businesses that are recently established because entrepreneurs are not going to have the time to come to class for all those lectures. 
I welcome to be there, but I need to think carefully about it. Nick, we got another one. Yeah, uh, because I even remember your name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually uh, impressed by the fact that you guys acknowledged that um, the project, because with other MBAs, it's more of a thesis, more academic. So I just want you to give me an overview of how is this project in terms of is it a typical way you assign a student to go and look for a topic, then they do a first chapter proposal and come back? How like in okay, sure. how do you So Nick, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, revert to Conrad again, but just to give you my personal view on that, that's yeah. exactly what we are not doing. Uh, there's obviously gonna be a mentor a mentorship process. The, what we have all come across over the years of uh, working with MBAs and going through these uh, through business schools is that the the, the process of this uh, what some business schools call research projects, others call a thesis, uh, is, a, is particularly onerous for the types of individuals doing the MBA. And while this will have some, some form of, it will have the rigor, and it's also, as Conrad mentioned, at NQF level nine, it's a much more practically orientated, and we work with you with, a, a, it's not the same mentor that works with you throughout, it's a, it's a mentor as what others call a supervisor, that takes you through the process and ensures that you, you, you basically work through and you deliver a practically orientated project. At one stage we were thinking about uh, a, kind of a business plan or, the, or something to that effect. This is a, a practical, uh, you work through, a, there's an opportunity, a business opportunity that you work through or a dilemma and, you, and that's how you ultimately bring the projects together. Alright, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that, on the, the, the difference between the two? Right, so the first thing we have to be aware of that in 2016, the Council of Higher Education changed the MBA and it made it a professional MBA, professional qualification, which meant that you could do away with the research report and you have what's called independent study. The independent study must make up 25% of the course at NQF level 9. So just to give the background to it. So what we are saying, just to answer your question clearly, <coughs> is we will help you to set up a dilemma or find a topic to work on, hopefully in your organization, but maybe in somebody else's organization. Then you must go and do some research, let's show you, and that sort of thing, and maybe place some statistics. As well as literature, you can speak to experts. Then what you will do is this, you'll come back with sound, solid recommendations linked to what you found in your research to say this is what you should do. Okay? So let's take a, a dilemma, let's say, about recycling in an organization. How do we actually recycle in this organization? And how should we implement a recycling program? They would go off and do that. And then they'd actually come with a detailed recommendation of all the steps that you've been through. Notice, you do not need to have implemented it for you to get your mark. If you have implemented it, that would be really seen as a bonus. Because you realize the difficulty of actually doing the implementation. So you'd be guided and there would be a review of all the suggestions to make sure that they're practical, that they will actually work. And the very big question to ask, will you have access to be able to do what you want to do? In other words, can you speak to people about that? Because sometimes you can't, but you don't know. You can't get it. Bear in mind as well, so that's a one portion of it. The other portion of the Capstone project is this, that you're going to capture your insights from the different courses. So I'm going to give you one insight straight away. So one of the things we would be talking about is mergers and acquisitions. Now, something like, some people would say 90%, some people say 70%, some people say 60%. Our mergers never, ever deliver value. So it should be after you've done our courses that that's one of the insights you walk away from. And that insight, just think about it, over your business career, could be worth millions of rands to you. So we ask you to capture that insight. And you capture insights as you go through. We're going to give you a, a notebook to keep track of everything that you learn on the MBA, uh, and then you'll be able to just do your insights. So that's one portion of it. The next portion is that three minute video where you speak about the leader's manifesto. What is it that you do to set a worthwhile vision? What is it that you do to keep people on your side and work with you? And what is it that you will do to make sure that things happen and happen on time and up to standard? Think about that in terms of leadership. We didn't call it an MBR, but <laughs> we will be working on leadership, so not to worry. We will be, as I said, you're going to start off talking about yourself, you're going to end off not talking about leadership in the brand business. So that's what it is. But we're trying to keep it practical. We are making it academic. 
with the element of the literature review that you have to do. And I might add that, so, so that's part of the trend of those business schools around the world. If you talk to any, anybody that's done an MBA in some of the other countries around the world, it's typically, um, it's, it's typically the approach that moving away from a, 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 a you know, rigorous academic thesis as opposed to, to that. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. I'm, I'm Del. Del. Uh, Del. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more about the core module than the free lecture. Um, and I've done some math and I can see how that works because it's two years, 16 blocks, oh, 16 kind of slots. Um, what are the module, or what are some of the flavors of the electives? Because there's one example here about digital economy, and obviously it's dependent on the year that that's been offered and what resources you have. But in first, I guess the electives are going to be in the second year of your first intake. So what are you envisaging could be possibilities? Right, so first of all, we have a liberal policy to electives. We're saying if you can do an elective elsewhere that we would recognize and it's appropriate, we'd be happy to recognize that and you could do it elsewhere. What we've done is we've designed our elective titles where we talk about contemporary issues in. And so we've got contemporary issues in a number of different areas. So that come 2021 when we're running the elective, we can then do it either in, let's say, supply chain management, let's say it's in leadership, whatever it may be. But you're quite correct. We actually will offer a fairly limited range of electives, more than likely about 10. So we'll offer something like 20, and then see which ones are chosen, see which ones we've got people for, and then we'll offer about 10. Because we want to have at least 10 people in a class. But that's the way it works. So we've, we've recognized, we haven't got everything sorted out yet, but we've got broad categories that can slot material. And, that we'll, question. and we'll definitely leverage off um, our network of international faculty and experts for those. That's, that's going to be <coughs> the key area that you are looking at. Follow on question. Do you see uh, a scope for something in non profit or health healthcare medical kind of spaces? Because that's my interest in where you know my project is going to what I'm doing now, why I want to do this. Um, as an elective, is that something that's applicable to an MBA or is it something that's more niche towards those um, industries? I can't actually, I wouldn't be able to answer straight off the bat whether there's going to be an elective that really speaks specifically to, to non-profit, but I, I do know that uh, given the orientation of the MBA, that's that's definitely something that will be addressed throughout. And um, and also in the, the, the healthcare space, there's been, a, there's actually, funny enough, you, you're not the first person to ask me this. There's quite a lot of interest in that, especially in the African context. So I suspect there will be something that might be related, but there's not, I can't say at this stage, Yes, we'll be having an elective uh, on health uh, on healthcare. There are others that are emerging, by the way. One of the one of the business schools, and I almost kind of speak out of turn here, but one of the business schools that we do engage with quite frequently, uh, it's Strathmore Business School in, in Nairobi, Kenya. They're actually running a lot of programs specifically in that space of, of healthcare, and we do collaborate with them very very closely. In fact, I've been up there a couple of times this year, and I'm, I'm lecturing again with them. So that's going to be something that that you might want to explore. Through us as we go forward, as we as we kind of pull the relation, relationship closer together with Strat. Okay. So maybe just to elaborate, what we're saying is this: that if UJ at another school or another faculty runs a course that's at NQF level nine, and you can attend that course, then we'd be saying we'll recognise it as an elective. And if you say find something elsewhere on healthcare. As we think so, and go to the man, the international partner, then you won't do it in that way. But I think the other bigger question maybe is this, is that if you do your capstone project, that will feed in very, very nicely to what you want to do. Yeah. Good. Yes. Um, so, Daniel, let us And then, in terms of your talk about mentoring, right? Um, are you going to have specialized mentors depending on the students you have? Or you're just going to have to take mentors. We, what, can you just so, elaborate a little okay. bit on specialized mentors? So what I mean, let's say I've got a company in engineering, right? Yeah. And I do construction or whatever the case So when I have a mentor, will that person be specialized who is basically doing something in that engineering sector? Or would it be just a generic uh, mentor? Because obviously, they're different. 
mm. according to every. I think um, we get well, we err on the side of specialization because of, and, and we draw particularly from industry or for the people. We've got quite a, a broad network, <coughs> especially of, of experts that have been and, and practitioners that are wanting to be, get involved with the business school. We've got quite a range of professors of practice now as well. Um, so I think we're going to be, uh, we'll probably be hearing on that. But I also want to say that if you are in the area of construction, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have somebody that comes out of construction that will be in your, be your mentor. So it would be something that we'd, we'd, we'd basically look at uh, beyond simply the center that you're operating in. But it, uh, to, to maybe have a, as a short answer, we'd err on the side of specialization. <coughs> Good, any, any other questions? And speaking to us as a country, you, you need what JDS is currently going to offer. So what would be the next steps if one is then wanting to take this uh, step? Next steps for, for, yes. for registration, etc. Right. Right, so please, if you can fill in the forms, you'll see if all it asks for is your name. You'll pick up the details from the register. Another question that it does ask you is, may we contact you with regard to the MBA? So if you could please just fill that in, we will then collect those and we will then contact you about it and we'll tell you the next steps. Because as I said, the registration actually only opens in August. So there's a bit of a gap between that. But we will engage with you in the meantime, we'll answer your questions, we'll also be able to give you a fair indication of whether you meet the criteria and then we'll do the assessments very quickly and we can do a very quick turnaround and answer to you in terms of acceptance. So we would be very keen to get a good class together. Does that answer it? Yeah, the next steps are clear. Yeah. We'll be in touch with us. <laughs> yeah. you well, if you give us your, your names, numbers, and email addresses, yeah, we'll be in touch with you. So, and I'm just going to ask you please to leave those on the seats, and we'll come down and collect them after you've gone back to the lovely venue outside, and we'll have something to eat. But just leave them there, we'll collect them, we'll then contact you, and then we'll be able to pursue whatever questions you have. Yeah. Uh, just maybe the last thing to say, now which we haven't really covered, is if we look at the list of lectures we have in place so far, these are top notch people, they really are. They will all be at this stage sessional lectures, we haven't appointed full time staff, but they really are people that will stimulate your minds incredibly and give you really good insights. And it's a mix between South Africans and equally international people that are coming in to do it. Some of the top people in technology and elsewhere is really going to be a roller coaster ride in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we literally handpicked those, and it's, it's and we can give you some more information on, on those faculty that we've that we've got to start uh, start teaching on those because that's going to be very very important for you as well. A lot of practical experience that have the the, the required as well. So most of them have got to all your PhD already and all the rest of those, but they've operated in in industry. One, of the, one in particular that comes to mind was was part of uh, part of the, uh, the 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 organization or the, the multinational that helps Junior. You, you, you guys know Junior, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Nigerian company that was on the, the Nigerian uh, on the on the New York Stock Exchange. So he was actually one of those that that was part of uh, uh, part of like the, the, the venture capital behind that that puts puts uh, things together that supports a Junior and that's ultimately now. Just listed uh, junior on the New York Stock Exchange. So th those types of stories are that have just happened now with uh, African multinationals are those that, that are going to be some of the, the stories that we're going to be talking about, or those that started off as small and medium-sized businesses like those, uh, like Junior itself, that is now actually listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and how they grew, how they grew and, and, and scaled in the African context. And these are stories that have just happened literally over the last 18 months or, or two years, and those are the stories that we're going to be be rallying into and have looking at as case studies, as real life case studies as they unfold. Right, so it's not quite over yet. We uh, don't worry, it's, uh, there's no more no more presentations, no more uh, QA's and all the rest. But we are sticking around for more for the next uh, little while. Uh, please join us uh, on in that area there where there were food, snacks, drinks, all the rest of it. Uh, we are around and so please just come and ask us a few questions. Obviously Conrad and myself you've seen Steve Blur is over here. Yeah, that's just, uh, you can see there, there we go. Uh, we have Leo, we have Sarika, we've got, I don't know which other staff, Mashak is here. Uh, we're all part of the JVS. Ask us any questions, actually ask them a lot of questions. You need us, you need us to, to enjoy the, the small pieces of all time. 
But again, thank you very much, everybody. It's really fantastic to see you all here. I'm pleased to see the interest, and I really hope to see a lot more of you now. If there's any other questions, we can take those outside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.